Hi and welcome to this week's web design video blog. Last week we made a start on a series of video blogs on HTML5. We thought it'd be relevant this week to highlight and analyse the relationship and compatibility between Flash and Apple's range of touchscreen products. As web designers, we believe it's important to keep track of this dispute to help anticipate the future of HTML5 and the way that we use the internet. So, if you're not already aware, then to cut a long story short, Apple's pioneering range of touchscreen products like iPhone and iPad do not support Flash. Now, a year ago, and myself included, assumed this was temporary, partly because Apple's reasoning behind this was never very clear. However, after the significant events of the past three months or so, Apple are clearly stating that Flash will not be supported on their touchscreen devices for the foreseeable future. The first notable event was the release of the letter from Apple CEO Steve Jobs. The letter is publicly available on Apple's website, filed under hot news. To summarise this letter, Apple explained the following six points. Firstly, they argue that Flash is not an open system and suggest that web standards should be open and not partially reliant on third-party software. Secondly, Steve Jobs talks about the full web. Here, Apple set out to reassure that despite not supporting Flash on their touchscreen devices, users of the iPad, iPhone and iPod are not missing out on much content, in particular video. The third thing covered in this letter is security. Apple claimed that Flash's poor security record compromises their products in addition to being the number one reason Macs crash. Fourth, battery life. Apple state that using software instead of hardware to run content like video uses too much power, again compromising the user experience of their touchscreen products. The fifth point is about usability. Steve Jobs explains how Flash was designed for PCs using mice and not for touchscreens using fingers. And finally, Apple explained why they believe developing apps in Flash compromises the quality and development of apps. The second significant move by Apple was last week when they released a little section on their website to showcase what HTML5 can do. This gallery was linked from a prominent tab on their homepage, but has since disappeared after Apple have blanketed their homepage with the marketing for the new iPhone. You can still find this gallery by going to apple.com forward slash HTML5. We believe Apple have created this gallery to reinforce Steve Jobs' letter to show that HTML5 can do without Flash and also demonstrate to consumers that Apple are pioneers by supporting the upcoming web standards of HTML5 and CSS3. The irony of it, however, is that the majority of the HTML5 and CSS3 showcase will only work with Apple's recently updated internet browser Safari. Obviously, it's in Apple's best interest to upgrade their browser to support HTML5 and CSS3 in order to back up the support for the new standards. However, browsers like Firefox, Chrome and Internet Explorer would need to follow suit before web designers and developers can start taking advantage of the HTML5 and CSS3 features that Apple is showcasing. Now, we could go on about Apple, Flash and HTML5 all day, but what we wanted to suggest in this video was that the future of the internet and how we use it is not set in stone. If Firefox, Chrome and most importantly, Internet Explorer really and quickly embrace HTML5 and CSS3, like Apple have, then web designers and developers may start to wean themselves off Flash when their clients start asking why their websites don't work on the increasingly popular iPhones and iPads. But on the other hand, Apple and Adobe may seek to resolve their differences and the web can move forward with HTML5, CSS3 and Flash working together in harmony on all devices that access the internet. So we hope this week's video blog has been thought provoking. Please join our discussion on the subject by leaving your comments on our supporting blog post.